I'm honored today to be talking with Dr. Richard Helton, president of Vincennes University. Please help me understand the historical significance of Vincennes University. Well, first of all, uh, Phyllis, as you know, uh, VU is the oldest uh, institution in our state. Uh, we were created in 1801 by William Henry Harrison, obviously was not president at that time, but later became president. In fact, I can look, um, look out my window on the uh, southwest side of uh, my office and look at his stately mansion um, every day. And, and oftentimes when I do that, I, 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 I'm, I'm impressed with the foresight uh, that uh, William Henry Harrison had about establishing an educational institution or organization uh, in, in, in that time when survival was so critical uh, uh, with the people uh, wherever they were in our country at that point. Uh, but he fully understood that if people were going to survive for the long term, uh, an education was important, and thus he created Vincent University. Uh, it's been interesting over the years, uh, as, as, as our institution has moved forward, uh, we're predominantly a two-year school. We have about 20 uh, four-year programs, but we have uh, a major interest in career and technical education, which fits very nicely with the needs of the state of Indiana. And so as time has gone forward, uh, I think that mission of open enrollment, which means we will accept any student uh, coming to us as long as that student has a, a valid high school diploma or the equivalent, uh, we will accept that student to come to Vincent University. And I think that is absolutely a wonderful mission which makes us different than any school in the state of Indiana. So not only are we f the first created institution in our state, but we have an open enrollment which says to our citizenry, uh, if you have students who have a high school diploma, we will accept you. We'll take you from where you come, and we will do our very, very best to make you a better student and a better person when you leave us. And I don't know of any greater mission in our state today than the mission that Vincent University has. So from day one, from 1801, and until we where we are today, uh, that's been our mission, and we're very pleased about it. I know your educational experience is somewhat prior to going to Vincent's, but if you would review those, and certainly those steps up to the presidency and the historical significance of knowing about the university and then where you came from educationally just seemed to be put together at the right time? Well, uh, ironically, uh, I was born and raised about 35 minutes from Vincent University. Uh, but Cindy and I had not lived, Cindy being my wife, Cindy and I had not lived in that region since 1970. Uh, I can honestly tell you, uh, prior to becoming the president of Vincent University, prior to my interviews there, I'd only been on that campus twice once as a high school senior and where I met a, a college coach in Indiana to discuss my possibility of playing college basketball uh, in, in the state. Um, but it wasn't Vincent University. And so uh, that was my first time. That was in February 1964. So you can, you can do the math on my age. The, Second time uh, that I went to Vincent University was Mother's Day weekend 2004. And I had spent uh, most of the day with my mother, but on my way back to Indianapolis, because I was still with Avon Community School Corporation at the time, I stopped at Vincent's and just walked the campus. Beautiful campus. And so um, uh, I had applied for the position of president and was just absolutely pleased about the, the, the campus and I could see the value that it brought to the community. My way of getting there uh, was kind of interesting as well. Uh, I actually taught high school English and did some coaching uh, in 68 through 70 in Pike County. That's when we left. And then I did my trek 
to Ripley County where I spent 20 years as a teacher and as a coach and administrator and as a superintendent my last five years at Milan, Indiana, before coming to Avon. The whole Vincent University piece uh, came to pass when I received a call from uh, a headhunter asking if I had an interest in the Vincent University job. This will tell you how wired in I really was. I didn't even know the job was open. Uh, I was in my 36th year in, in K-12 public education. I loved my work at Avon. I loved all of my jobs. I loved all of my communities, my churches. Um, I'd had a wonderful 36 years in public education. And I am still today a very, very strong public education advocate because I believe it's the real world. Without question, it is the real world. So anyway, long story short, I did the process. I said, yes, I would have an interest. I got a chance to be close to home, close to my mother, who's still living uh, about 35 minutes from Vincennes University. And so long story short, I, I end up as president. The significance of that, uh, I think, are twofold. Number one, I think, I think we helped bring a connection to K-12 from higher ed. And I always thought in my K-12 days that we had two distinct missions. But at the end of the day, we were all about doing one thing, and that was making students or giving students the opportunity to be successful. In my mind, it was always K through 16 because that was our goal uh, at K-12. That, that is our goal at Vincent University. We want students to be successful. I didn't understand why we didn't cross those lines. I never understood that. I didn't understand it from the day I began teaching. And then when I became a superintendent, we hired the teachers from IU and Purdue and Ball State and all of our sister institutions. Uh, our, their best customers were our kids. And so I just didn't understand why we had this, this line of division. I just never understood that which is why then the early college became important to me because that gave Vincent University, and in this case, Wayne Township Schools, the opportunity to do um, some good mission work. And we could do it together, and there wasn't any reason why we couldn't do it. And uh, so we launched that. Uh, Phyllis, I will share with you when we started that process, uh, I think then Superintendent Terry Thompson and I knew where we wanted to end up. We weren't quite sure how we were going to get there. And so we put some people in the room who were probably smarter than both of us. And we sat around a table and they sat around a table and eventually put together a program that we have at BDU today, which I think is a wonderful, wonderful program. But it's probably a good testimony to our staff, the people who actually put this together and who make it work every day. And there's just no reason not to have more of them. I understand there are possibly more that will come online, so to speak, with the program at Vincennes. That is true. Uh, currently we have eight. Two of those eight uh, are early colleges for career and tech, which match the needs of our state. In fact, I've said for as long as I could remember, if you want to talk about economic development in our state, you have to first start with schools in every community in this state because schools are the faces of your communities. Always have been, always will be. And so when you talk about economic development and what you can do to help your state, you have to talk about your schools. And now that we've launched these early colleges and now that we've, we've specified some of them to be career and tech, they really do impact the economic development in our state and particularly the workforce. As you know, that's our next uh, endeavor also is to have that affiliation with you also. And uh, we look forward to, to, to that work as well. Uh, we're going to open, um, I think, four more early colleges here in about a month, month and a half. Uh, two of them will be career and tech early colleges. So that will make us 12. Um, and we just um, got agreement with the state legislature to open 10 uh, career uh, early colleges. Uh, 
career and tech early colleges. Uh, we've been granted some funds to do that, uh, and we're going to locate them strategically in different parts of our state, much like we're doing with Area 31 here. Um, we find that we don't have to do bricks and mortar. We can use existing staff from the school districts. Typically, the equipment's pretty good. If not, we can help supplement that equipment. And at the end of the day, it's a cost saving to our, to our students in this state. Uh, and we have good numbers on that to, to show what that will uh, ultimately be when the student finishes uh, his or her program in career and tech uh, and early colleges in general. So we feel good about our place. We feel good about uh, uh, the, the, the history of what early colleges have done up to this point. But we are indeed grateful and indebted to Wayne Township Schools because without that first early college, you don't get the second one. And I think the success that we've enjoyed with Wayne Schools, without any question, has helped us sell programs to other districts across our state. Can you sort of um, relate how that first conversation went? I can. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, Dr. Thompson and I were uh, at a meeting together in Naples, Florida in January, which is always a good time to go to Naples. And we were, in fact, we were at uh, Marco Island uh, where the meeting was held for about three or four days. And one day at break, we were just sitting around talking and uh, we said, well, why, why, why can't we do something together here? I mean, I'd known Terry for a long time and I, well, I'm sure there is. I'm sure we can do something. And I'm not sure which way that, who, who asked uh, the, the question initially. So we kind of sat around and we actually ended up putting some, uh, some statements on a napkin over a cup of coffee. I probably had to buy the coffee. I'm not even sure about that, but I probably had to buy the coffee. And then long story short, uh, before we left, uh, Mark O'Terry said, well, when can, uh, when can we talk about this? I said, well, when do you want to host us? He said, how about next week? I said, done. Well, then I go back and I'm thinking, well, will, will Vincent University faculty believe this is a good idea? Because we're taking credit hours off campus. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and oh, by the way, uh, will our faculty say, well, can a high school faculty member deliver our program? Well, if that person's appropriately credentialed, uh, I did not see why not. But what I did, uh, quite honestly, fellas, uh, I brought uh, a lady who was um, uh, an English prof for us, Dr. Laurel Smith, who had been with us for a long, long time and had a lot of respect generally by our faculty. And I also asked a gentleman by the name of Jay Bardot, who was the chair of our chemistry department, uh, who retired about five or six years after that, after 47 years with Vincent University. Oh my goodness. A wonderful man, a wonderful teacher. Uh, I get notes from his students with her on a regular basis about the quality of work that he did for us. I happen, to go to, I happen to go to church with Jay and his wife, Ellen. Cindy and I enjoy their company, and we enjoy working with them in our church as well. But I thought if I could bring two well-respected faculty members to this meeting, that would serve as a wonderful reminder to the rest of our faculty that these two people think this is a good idea to explore. So maybe we ought to be supportive if Jay and Laurel are supportive. And so, honestly, fellas, uh, we did that by design. I, I, won't, I won't lie to anybody about that. Well, you had a plan. We had a plan, and I wanted to be able to sell it with two of the best people we had on campus, and we were able to do that. Came here. Uh, I'm sure Terry had a doubter or two in the room as well. Uh, that's not uncommon in education. It's not uncommon in any organization. And those people actually make us better because they keep us on our toes. And so we sat around a table just like this one, the first meeting, and then we got more involved and we brought people into the room who understand, who understood the whole transfer piece, the whole curriculum piece. Uh, our day is different than your day, but there's no way um, 
that we couldn't deliver a program if we just put our minds to it. Long story short, here we are. We've had now, um, like we started in the fall of 2006 with, uh, with the students, 125 sophomores. And so here we are today. Now we've had, I think this was our fifth graduation, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I think the program gets stronger each year. Uh, I think we continue to learn, and as educators, we ought to do that. Sometimes we don't want to do that. We, we, we do that fighting and kicking and screaming, but we need to understand if we're not learning, then we're not giving our students the best opportunity to learn. And uh, so it's been fun. I know there's a financial obligation from the university also, so you had to work with the board also to we did. Uh, do that. So how did that begin? The, um, and believe me, uh, just as, uh, as uh, Terry uh, had in, in, in his uh, business people, we also had questions from our business people. Okay, now Dick, you've, you've committed us to this, so how, how are we going to do this financially? Well, we, we received some credit hour reimbursement from the state of Indiana. Uh, we also received, now since we've got the, the um, um, uh, graduation rates, the, the, the performance metrics, uh, we received some additional funding uh, in, uh, from, from that. The only problem with the funding that we received from the state of Indiana, it is always after the fact, which by the way, that didn't change in my life when I left K-12 because K-12, you always receive money after the fact. You had to have the students, then the money followed the students. And then uh, Wayne Township uh, had written a grant. They take care of the tuition. Uh, the good thing about this is that uh, students who are on free and reduced lunch don't pay any tuition. So it ended up being a really workable deal uh, from, from Wayne's side of the table. It became a workable deal from ours because at the same time we were looking at how we were going to drive funding from this and we knew tuition wouldn't be the big dollar for us. We also wanted to be sure that we had an assistant dean here who would monitor the academic rigor. That was going to be important. It was going to be important to our faculty and people on our campuses and our sites because they were going to ask the tough questions. Oh, by the way, are they getting the same rigor here as they get at Vincennes or ATC or our Jasper campus or wherever we are. And so we want to be able to answer that. So we brought an academic dean with, with the program. We brought a learning coach or two. We brought some tutors. Uh, and so at the end of the day, um, we were watching students pretty closely. Um, Wayne administration was watching students pretty closely. And so when you put two, two good partners together, uh, generally, you have a pretty good outcome, and that's what we've had. Looking ahead, um, what do you foresee with um, not only additional programs, but I sometimes hear not a lack of respect for the program, but how could you do this, give them everything they need for both programs at the same time? Uh, we, we have heard some of that, fellas. Um, probably more of that early on than we're hearing now, which, which, which makes me feel pretty good about the program. But like Wayne Schools, VU is always trying to find ways to strengthen a program or add a program, depending upon the needs of that school district. We are not prescriptive. When we came here, we said, okay, what are your needs? If we're working a partnership with five or six different uh, uh, industry partners, which we do with regularity, we're not prescriptive. We'll say to those in, in the industry partners, what are your needs? We don't know those needs. We can deliver the program for you if you'll tell us what you want us to deliver. That's our mantra, that's what we do. For us to come to Wayne schools or to Lawrenceburg schools or Fort Wayne schools and say, Here, here's what you need. We've never thought that was the right approach. We want Wayne schools, we want Fort Wayne schools, and we want Lafayette schools. We want somebody to tell us specifically what those needs are. Because I think far too long, higher education has been far too prescriptive. We have all of the answers, and we don't have any more answers than anybody else. We can help you get to those answers, but you need to tell us what they are. And so that's been our approach to do that. So if Wayne comes to us and say two years, 
and says, you know, we'd like to have um, a CNC program, or we'd like to have an aviation flight program, and I think we have aviation flight at uh, Area 31. But we'd like to have uh, something in, in, in robotics or, or programmable logistics. Okay, you have a need for that? Here's what we can do. And we'll show, uh, whether it be business and industry partners or, or our school corporation partners, we'll show them uh, our course catalog. Now you tell us what we need to do with these courses that will be most helpful to you. Do we need to massage um, A203? I mean, what do we need to do over here to make this work for you? And that's that's been our approach and it seems to be pretty successful for us. How do you work with uh, other universities like the four-year, like Indiana University or Purdue? How is that, how was that established? Um, we have, I could not tell you, we, we have more articulation agreements with our sister institutions than probably any school in the state of Indiana. And our faculty and staff have been doing this so long uh, that we have wonderful uh, program partnerships with Purdue, with all of our sisters, actually. Um, law enforcement at uh, Ball State, um, we're, we're part of the Kelly School at IU. Uh, Purdue Engineering just agreed to bring its engineering program to our Vincennes campus, to our uh, Gibson campus, and to our Jasper campus. And that'll start in the fall of 2017. Purdue is a wonderful partner. IUPUI has been a wonderful partner with Wayne and VU with our early college and has helped us uh, strengthen the program. In fact, we even have an IUPUI person on the advisory committee because we want students to leave here, as does Wayne Schools, transfer to IUPUI or in some cases Purdue or IU, and those students are academically prepared to make that transition. So it's in our best interest because of all the articulation agreements that Vincent University has with our sister institutions, it is, it is critical that good quality be offered in these programs because that is our lifeblood. They believe in what we do now and typically they will say to students coming to Purdue or Ball State from VU, the biggest change that you're going to have in your life, you're just going to be changing dorm rooms because typically all their credits transfer. That's important to us. So quality will always be important because it has a longer term benefit to VU. And so when we start programs like early colleges, we know they're going to be good quality programs because we want those students to be able to transfer to our sisters where we have a good reputation. Have you been following the graduates of the early college to find out where they are and what they're doing? We have not for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, we, we, we don't know always where they go. And number two, there isn't a system within the uh, higher learning or the, the, the Commission on Higher Education in Indiana to trace them. You folks in K-12 are doing a better job of that than we're doing in higher ed. But I also know that that is at the top of a priority list to get that done uh, with the Commission on, uh, Commission on Higher Education in our state. And we've been pushing for that probably for 10 years, even before we started early colleges, because we wanted to know how our VU students were doing at Ball State or how they were doing at Purdue. Now, by reputation, they tell us that our students are doing fine. We'd like to see the good numbers. When you work with uh, higher ed, um, your, how, how do you do that? I mean, how did you present the early college program to them? Early on, we did not have to do that. We now have to have program approval, which only strengthens early college, and we're not, we're, we're not anti-doing that. We think that's wonderful, because that means to me we've been recognized our early colleges have been recognized as viable alternatives to coming on campus and staying there for two years and getting a degree and moving forward. So we like the recognition that has been given. Uh, the, uh, the Indiana Commission on uh, Higher Education uh, does respect early college now. That's a good thing. Number two, uh, sell 
is now uh, kind of the evaluator of the early college program and Cell will look at what we're doing at any given um, school district and then we'll submit that to the Commission on Higher Education who will in turn then approve the process. And is that, that was, a contract with Cell then? And you might explain what that is. It really is. A Cell, uh, of course, is, um, is located at the uh, University of Indianapolis and uh, it's about accelerated program. It's about early colleges. Uh, and actually, the Indiana Commission on Higher Education asked Cell to do this. And so Cell has gotten involved with helping high schools and higher educational institutions work together to develop programs. Uh, they, they even give them ideas on what programs ought to be put in place. They give ideas about the process. And I think it's been very helpful to, to, to uh, 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 school districts and also to higher education partners. And uh, so it's a, it's a wonderful resource and they have a great background in early colleges and, and dual credit and it works really well. In your plans for the development of career ed and technical, uh, those students will have an associate degree also, is that right? In some programs that will be yes. In some programs there are so many credit hour requirements that they will be probably about one semester short of, of, of achieving that deal. Now, we've talked with school districts about, about finding a way for students once they've finished the spring semester and this are graduating. would be their, their first year? Or that, that, that would be the spring semester of their senior year in college, their last semester. We always called it first and second semester in K-12. We call it fall and spring. I've had to adjust my, my vocabulary a bit. But once students finish the second semester in high school in a career and tech center, they're typically, or with, with, with many programs, will have one more semester to complete. We would like to see that, that semester completed immediately after the student graduates from high school. Because the beauty of this is this student's going to have close to 50 credit hours toward a degree. And we all know that the best way to finish that is to do it immediately. And so we're encouraging students to do that. In fact, some of that is happening as we speak. And uh, I think at the end of the day, fellas, when students do that, they've also put themselves in a position for the first good job. And so it's important that they finish that semester. I know many of them want, will want to play after that, that, that final it's semester a, of high school. It's an arduous task. For it them. is. It really is. And I think today, and they might even be able to do some of this uh, through a co-op program, some of it online, but there are just ways to get that completed. And we're typically only talking about 10 or 12 hours. And then would Vincennes be the place where they could do that? They, we we'd certainly would enjoy doing that. Uh, that. That will end up being uh, the decision made by the student and his or her parents. And then... But it would be probably in the student's best interest that we complete that because we've already got the program outline in place, the curriculum's in place, and that would be probably the best, the best solution to that. Would that be online as a possibility? Absolutely. Or? So, Could be. so that would be part of the planning, deciding. And again, it depends in many cases on what that program is. If it's a CNC program, we think there is no substitute for that student being actually coming to our campus and working on updated CNC machines. And ours are updated with regularity because we have agreements with them. Yeah. And so we, we would say to those students, and probably the people in the CNC world would say to those students, you might want to do that. And so we would, we'd certainly make that available to them. What is your relationship with uh, Ivy Tech? Actually, uh, that probably, uh, there probably is misinformation about that. Uh, first of all, I would consider Tom Snyder one of my professional friends, president of Ivy Tech. And uh, Ivy Tech uh, is no different than any other institution in our state. Always trying to find ways to improve, always trying to find more money. Uh, not different than K-12, really. Um, but uh, we've even had some, we've had some conversations about Ivy Tech's two-year students coming to some of our four-year programs. And so we've not, while we've not gotten that completed yet, uh, that, is, uh, that is a topic of discussion that we've had with, with Ivy Tech. 
But uh, day in and day out, uh, I'd say our relationship with Ivy Tech is, is, uh, is comparable to our relationship with any of our sister institutions. I wonder if you could sort of look in the crystal ball 10 years from now, maybe five even, what uh, an early college program would look like, how it would be different. I think, first of all, you're going to see more of them. Uh, number two, uh, you're going to see more refinement in them. You're probably going to see more online instruction in them. And I think you're going to see early colleges evolve just like K-12 evolves, like higher education evolves. And we're all going to continue to find ways to make the program stronger and better. We'll still be seeking funding to make sure that both the school district and the institution of higher learning um, are funded appropriately. Um, and then I think there will be a time where the early colleges will likely peak. Um, I think colleges today are about accessibility and affordability. And early college deals effectively with both of them. And I think as long as there's an accessibility issue and there's an affordability issue, that early colleges are going to continue to grow and be, uh, and be strengthened. Do you foresee that um, some K through 12 programs will try to be more competitive than other K through 12 programs to obtain an early college? Would they be located in clusters so that you look at the population? You know, um, you it's interesting that you say that, and that's a wonderful question because when we started talking with the people in southwest Indiana about an early college, we actually brought seven or eight uh, school districts together to talk about having one early college. And I was a little disappointed that we didn't get uh, a, 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 a little more interest in doing that at that time, but it was new. And But I thought, since I had just come from the superintendency, I had just come from K-12, uh, I thought maybe that um, they might not think I was a snake oil salesman and I was actually trying to do something good for kids. I, and I still thought that was my goal. But they were worrying about union participation, they were worrying about funding and who was going to get the funding for the kids. Had I been a superintendent, Phyllis, I would have been asking those same questions because I, did, I would not have been interested in losing any funding and I wouldn't have been interested in losing any of my students. But now as time has gone forward, uh, of those initial six or seven that we brought in, we now have two of them in an early college separately, not clustered. So. My point to you, my answer to your question in a long drawn out way is absolutely we'd talk to people about doing that. Um, well, I was thinking of Area 31. Absolutely. Um, as it's well, kind of already in place here. Yeah, yeah the, it really so is. We'll sort of be starting yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. But the, the message that I always bring to the table when I talk with, with, with board members and superintendents and principals about early college we aren't going to be prescriptive here because your needs are going to be different mm -hmm. than the needs that we have in Washington, Indiana. I know that. And so all I want you to know is that we're willing to help foster a good program for you, but you have to tell us what that is. And it seems to work pretty well. Will the new classifications of diplomas be something that you'll continue to work with and look at? We will because uh, as, I, as, I became, as, as K-12 changes, and there will always be changes, then if we're not on our game as an institution of higher education and we aren't willing to change, then it, this, it's all going to be for naught. And so there are better ways to do, do things. We just have to accept those better ways. And change comes so hard. Um, and I hope as I've gotten older that I've been as receptive to change as I was when I was a 37-year-old superintendent. You've made a wonderful contribution to 
uh, and for a lot of people in our state. And I really appreciate you taking the time. And you're going to be leaving our state, I understand. I am. Um, uh, the people of Wayne, I think, know this. You probably know it as well. Uh, our daughter, who used to work in Wayne Township, was an assistant principal at the ninth grade center. Um, has uh, some, has a, fra a fragile health issue. Oh, I didn't know that. And uh, we have to, um, uh, we need uh, to be of help to her and her husband and two little girls. Her two little girls were three and one. So she needs, uh, she needs some help right now. And here's a, a young lady, fellas, who has never asked her parents for anything. She's like her brothers. They just voiced it on their own two feet and did what they were supposed to do and fund to raise. And, uh, and while she has not asked us to come, I know down deeply she is elated that we're coming to be of help. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to become residents of the state of Ohio uh, while our residents will be in Ohio, our heart will still be in Indiana. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Always willing to help.